Hi everyone, it's Old School DM again. I'm doing more experiments with fiber stone paper. Um, today's experiments are with the gloss paper, 10 mil thick. Uh, I'm not going to test the water resistance today, I'll do that next time. Today I'm going to test um, manual cutting uh, against robo cutting, um, scoring. I'm going to build some structural objects this time. Uh, the, this is a page from a model, which I will link. Um, a free model of a Japanese gate printed on the, gla on the gloss paper. As you can tell it's glossy. Um, I think the colors turned out beautiful. I printed it on uh, my Epson 1800, R1800 photo printer um, using standard photo settings. Uh, no bleeding. Uh, the color came out very true, very beautiful and bright. Um, so next I'm going to cut two of these with my robo cutter and then I will manually cut and score these ones. This will also be scored by, uh, cut and scored by the robo cutter. And I'll compare them. Uh, I'll show them to you scored. I'll stop and do an edging and then I will glue them together and tell you what happens. Um, uh, I wanted to share a little bit about the back of the paper. Uh, you might be able to see it. There are marks on the back of the paper. Uh, and so though it's 10 mils thick, um, let's put the paper upside down, uh, it still feels very, very sturdy uh, and especially heavy because it's made of stone. So I'll be back in a moment. So I've completed both the RoboCut using my Silhouette SD and the um, hand scored and hand cut version. And I wanted to share what the effects were. You can tell some of them here, but I can bring this up nice and close. The RoboCut one using the perforation, you can see where it cut, it also scraped. Although the edge is not as bad as it was with the minis, except on the diagonals. So straight line cuts are not too bad. Um, we'll see how this is when I edge this. Uh, this is kind of what I expected. Uh, here's the same thing manually. Um, manually scored. You'll see some of the same scraping, but it's not as pronounced. Make that to focus. Sorry about that, I'll probably edit that out. There we go. Um, so that's just natural effect. The, uh, the glossy surface has the same effect as the matte surfaces. Um, it's just scraping the sizing off the front. Um, I'm going to score these, fold and glue them, and I'll show you what the results are in a moment. Before I glue these, I've already completed the the edging, I wanted to share a couple things. First of all, I wanted to share that I was edging with a really cheap $1 pen, a big mark a lot in red. I wanted red to match the uh, red things, uh, the red pulls. Um, I did want to show something really interesting that I've never seen before. Um, so the perforated edging, the red ink, of course, leaked through the holes and also stained the back. What's really interesting is the hand scored one has beautiful, I should show the front here. You can see the kind of red bump, bumpy edging. Uh, it shows up really strong on the camera. It's not quite that bad in real life. Uh, here's the manually scored with the knife tip scoring. Uh, but when you look at the back, the same red ink, no leak. Um, the, the stone in between is non porous. It does not leak. So when considering edging, if you're using this stuff, you can probably use things that you would normally think of as leaking. I normally don't use, uh, I don't usually use um, Sharpies because they bleed too much, but this stuff is, is basically bleed proof. Uh, if you don't cut all the way through, it doesn't bleed. Uh, so I wanted to share that before I glue these things. Oh, I wanted to share one more thing. Um, this stuff cuts like butter. When you manually cut, uh, I don't know, you know, you know, you all cut paper. You're used to getting a lot of resistance as you cut through. Um, 
all those fibers in paper. This provides almost no resistance. It caught me off guard when I first started cutting it by hand with just a regular, uh, regular exacto blade. Um, where is my blade? Here it is. I got one of these guys. You know, nothing special. Number 11 blade. Uh, the knife runs through really fast. Um, it's great. I like hand cutting, so for me, uh, that was really good stuff. Um, but I wanted to let you know, um, hand cutting looks like the right choice. So I'm going to glue these now. Be right back. So I've now glued these into uh, cylinders. Uh, as part of the structure, they're the uh, arms of the legs, you know, the towers that hold up the, the gate top. And a couple of observations. Uh, one is the one that I hand scored is significantly stronger. Uh, if you, just squeezing, I don't know if you know, when you make things with lots of sides, hexagons uh, and octagons, they tend to be pretty weak and easy to collapse. This, is, this one's much stronger than the one with the perf cut. Um, the perfs are just so obvious, no matter how far away I go with this, you guys can see them. Uh, so my recommendation in making anything uh, if you're using a robo cutter, having it cut the outlines but not the perforations, manually cut, um, you know, uh, instead of perforations, cut your own score lines. Um, you get a much stronger structure. It doesn't leak through uh, when you edge it, um, and it looks much better. Uh, so so far, I'm still liking uh, these, this stuff, and I'm especially liking the. Um, the gloss, and I don't usually like gloss for uh, building structures. Uh, also, using uh, pens that stain instead of just uh, paint on. So the Tombos, which I usually use, get all messy uh, when edging, whereas this, in this case, this cheap marker um, actually is holding the edging much better. Um, so um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to print more of this thing and just completely construct it with um, machine cut outside, uh, machine cutting for the shapes, but uh, manual um, scoring uh, and edging with strong uh, stain-like inks instead of just paint. Um, and I will show you the completed thing when it's done. And here's how my final model built with the Fiberstone paper, gloss paper, 10 mil, finally turned out. Um, give you a little pan so you can see what it looks like with figures. And also, um, this is a model which um, can be disassembled for easy storage. Let me show you the hack I did here. I put um, toothpicks in the top of each side, so this will come off, and the, uh, the lintel also slides out, so you can take it apart this way. So here are the separate parts for easier storage. And a few final thoughts about constructing this model. Um, the biggest challenge I had was uh, gluing um, the glue. Uh, all of the tabs uh, were printed on. The uh, artist had put ink into all of the tabs, and the tabs were very small. Um, and therefore, gluing things together was very, very uh, time-consuming and messy. Um, uh, part of that was because it's gloss paper. Uh, I've always had that experience with gluing gloss paper, so I generally don't glue printed tabs on gloss paper uh, for exactly that reason. I'm very happy with the strength of the paper. It's very, very strong for its thickness. Um, the uh, uh, Next up, I'll probably be testing uh, a lot of your custom requests about things like tensile strength, um, or the effect of water and fire. That should be fun. Um, but if you have other requests of what you'd like me to test the paper with, just let me know. 
Um, till then, this is Old School DM signing off.